Today on Hacktip, we're monitoring your system resources in Linux. And this Hacktip is brought to you by Eero. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, we are talking about monitoring system resources part Two. So last week we left off with LSOF, which stands for List Open Files. Today we are going to dig deeper into LSOF along with some bonus commands DF and DU. Continuing with LSOF, we have File Pass. So for this example, I'm going to type in LSOF forward slash home and hit enter. Okay. So we get some kind of interesting information in here. We see the command, in my case, I only have bash and LSOF running at the moment. And then we see the PID for each of these, then the user, then file descriptor. In this case, it's the current working directory. So that's pretty obvious. The type, which is directory as well. And then some more generic information about the size. So this can actually be really useful if say you have an SSH daemon running and you think someone may be using it to compromise the machine. What you could easily do is look for a username that you don't recognize with that simple command, and there you have your proof. And then you could just get rid of whoever the user is that shouldn't be on that machine, and then it's no longer compromised. Although, of course, we would probably recommend just burning the thing to the ground at that point. But this will only show you the topmost layer of information for running software, not all of the underlying files associated with it. So to view all of those as well, you can type in LSOF, tax C, and then your program. So in this case, I'm just going to use the program LSOF as an example because it makes for a great example. And then you just hit enter. So I don't see anything weird going on here, so I think that we're pretty good. Okay. So that's about it for LSOF. Of course, we do recommend checking out the man page and everything else with it. I'll have more commands right after the break. When you're looking to improve your wireless network, making sure that your entire home has a strong signal is a must, and that is where Eero comes in. They are launching the very first second generation mesh Wi-Fi system that comes with one Eero and one to two of these little guys, these beacons. These are mesh access points. They are not extenders. They are smaller, they plug into an outlet, and they have an ambient nightlight as well, and they are also more powerful than the originals. But if you already have the original, Eero has you covered. These little ones are backwards compatible, and they can be purchased separately. And of course, your system starts at $3.99 for all three components together, but if you want to buy just one beacon to add on, you totally can, and those are $149 each. We've gotten a chance to test these in the warehouse where our wireless usually does not reach from one end to another, and the Eero Mesh does a really great job of fixing the headache and giving me the speeds that I expect from my ISP. Plus, it was very easy to set up, and it's also reliable. Eero is also announcing the Eero Plus subscription, which includes advanced network security monitoring, supplementing those features that are already built in that you get for free with the device. They also include content filtering, which is great for houses with kids. Now, with any system, you get automatic updates, two-factor authentication for admin access, and Eero's backing with a bug bounty program and third-party audits as well. And we have a coupon code for you for free overnight shipping to the US or Canada. Visit Eero.com and at checkout, select overnight shipping, then enter hack tip and make it free. Check it out and learn more at Eero.com. A little PS, I am going to include a link to the online quick start guide for LSOF for y'all to look over since there is a whole bunch more commands that you can learn. I just went over a few of them. But on to the next one for monitoring system resources. This one's easy. I'll just show you. You type free and that's it. This will show you free memory of RAM in kilobytes. Now to see it in gig form, you can also type in free tech G or I could type in free tech M, and obviously this would mean gigabytes and megabytes. So that's very easy, and that's of course your RAM again. Now similarly, I can do the same thing for hard disk drive space. So I could type in DF and hit enter, and this is going to tell me, uh, aka disk free, It'll show me how much space is available on my hard disk drive or my solid state drive or all of the drives that are compatible with this Linux operating system. Now I can also type in dftachh and it's going to look a little bit different from what I saw previously, but it's the same information. It's just human readable in this stance. Okay, so as you can see, 
I haven't used barely any of my drive, but my boot drive is full. So that is very useful information to know. Uh, stuff in those temporary TMPFS uh, file storage areas, those are all going to disappear after I reboot. So I'm not too worried about those. And most of my user generated file storage happens on that Ubuntu root storage area, which of course has most of the storage available. Go figure. Now moving on from here, if I want to see how much storage a specific directory is using up, I can type in du tac h, aka disk usage. And you know what? I did that in my home directory. So I'm actually going to change directories over to, let's go in snub stuff test, because that's my test directory for pretty much everything. And I'll run that again. There you go, something much smaller and easier to read in this case. So du tac h again, that's human readable disk usage. And this is going to show me the space used in kilobytes, uh, megabytes or gigs for any specific directory that I chose. So in this case, I used test, and then under there is a subdirectory called test2. Now lastly, du tac hs. This is basically going to show me the same directory and the same storage size, but I am not including any subdirectories for this category. Now, lastly, to clear up space on my boot directory, because I'm sure you're wondering about that, I can use another command, and I'll show you that one real quick. It is dpackage tech l linux dash image star, hit that, okay. So now we see a huge lineup of the Linux image files installed on this machine. So then I can type in uname, tac r, and this will show me the current running Linux image that I am using. And then all I have to do is use these commands that are listed over at askubuntu.com to purge or remove all the old images and dependencies from my computer. So I stop getting the super annoying pop-up every single time I boot up my computer about my boot directory being full. Yes, Linux, thank you. I realize it's full. I've been a little busy lately to run through all these different images and make sure that I delete them all. Thank you very much. But if you, of course, have a better way to manage a full boot directory, let me know in the comments below because it's definitely something annoying and I feel like everybody has run into this problem at least once. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash hack5 and hit the like button if you got some good information out of this episode. Until then, I wanna hear your feedback. You can comment below. Be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, especially Especially this week, a couple of two weeks ago, maybe it was, we said goodbye to somebody who is very dear and special to us. So definitely check that out and, you know, send her good wishes on her rainbow bridge because we miss her a lot. And I think that's enough of that. So I will be over there as well, reminding you to trust your technolust. <laughs>